Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. To those who are new, I am Engineer J. I am a civil engineer and currently teaching as an engineering professor. And in this video, we will learn how to compute or how to analyze indeterminate structure using slope deflection method. Now, in our previous videos, we learned how to analyze a determinate structure. Again, when we say determinate structure, that means we can apply the equilibrium equations in computing for the unknown, such as the reactions or the internal forces. And we will also know how to determine whether that structure is determinate or indeterminate by um, just using the formula. If you remember, we have R plus F. We compare this to 3 times the number of rigid member. So if R plus F is greater than Rn, that means we have an indeterminate structure. That means um, in indeterminate structure, we have more reactions compared to the number of equilibrium equation. Okay? So that's how you... Um, that's how you identify whether a structure is determinate or indeterminate. Okay? But in this video, we will be focusing more on the indeterminate structure. Again, indeterminate structure is that um, the equilibrium, equilibrium equations alone are not sufficient for determining the reactions and internal forces. Thus, we need to add a new equation that is um, also known as a compatibility equation which is based on the geometry of the formation of structure. So again, um, we will be using the relationship of the deformation, the relationship of rotation in addition to our equilibrium equation so that we can analyze or we can compute the unknown reactions or the unknown forces in our beam. Okay? Now, we have uh, several methods of analysis in computing for indeterminate structure. We have we have the slope deflection method, we have the three moment equation method, we have the moment distribution method. We have also the method of consistent deformation, the portal method, the cantilever method, and the factoring method. This portal method and cantilever method and as well as the factoring method are mostly used especially when you are analyzing a frame structure okay that is subjected to lateral forces but in this video we will be um, focusing on the slope deflection method now slope deflection method by the way this is also known as stiffness method now in using the slope deflection method you need to um, familiarize yourself with the slope deflection equation in which we have m and f n and f here this um, refers to joint Okay, that is the right or the left joint of the beam or of a member. We have the FEM, this one is the fixed end moment. So later I am going to teach you on how to compute the fixed end moment of our beam subjected to several loads plus twice the flexural rigidity over the L times twice the, the slope of the um, one of the joint plus the slope of the other joint minus 3r r here that is the chord rotation and chord rotation will occur if we have a support settlement that is theta this is the settlement of our support over the length of the member like for example if we have uh, this um, structure okay in which this is our a this is our b and this our let's say it's our C. So of course you need to divide this structure into uh, members or at the point of discontinuity. And we can divide this into two. We have A B and B C. Now let's say we have A B. Now if we cut at B, of course we would have moment. Okay, and we have moment here. So let's say it's our moment A B and this one is our moment B A. Now, to compute for the um, slope, the slope or to generate slope deflection equation, we just need to compute um, MAB, that is the moment at support A, and this equals to the fixed end moment AB, that is at support A again, plus 2EI over L, then 2 times theta, theta at A, 
okay? Plus theta b minus 3r, okay? Now, if you want to compute the moment on the right support, then you have mba, and you just interchange the variable or the subscript, you have m a f e m b a, that is the fixed in moment on the right support, plus 2 e i over l times 2 times theta b plus theta a minus 3 r. So this is how you create a slope deflection equation. So later on, we will know how to use these equations in our analysis. Okay? Now we need to remember um, this important considerations in computing for slope deflection method. Now we have, if our um, support is a fixed end, that means our theta there is equal to zero. Of course, we do not have um, rotations or we do not have theta or an angle of rotations on the fixed end support. Okay? Then, of course, the moment at exterior hinged or ruler support is zero. So, of course, if we have um, exterior ruler, so our moment there is always equal to zero. And if we have hinge as well, that is also equal to zero. Now, for our sign convention, we need to um, take this in mind that for counterclockwise rotation and counterclockwise moment, that is always considered as positive. That would be our... Um, sign convention for computing slope deflection method. Okay? Always remember that one. Now, for fixed and moments, now fixed and moment, this is the moment if we have a restrained beam. Now, this is an ex example of a restrained beam in which we have two fixed supports or we have fixed supports on both ends of our beam. Okay? So, this is fixed support and this is fixed support. Our fixed and moment is this one. Now, if we have this load P on the um, center, L over 2, now our fixed in moment on the left is PL over 8. Now, you have to um, familiar, or you, ne you need to know all these fixed in moments. Otherwise, you need to um, derive this formula. But if you already know um, this formula, then you can do direct substitution now. Okay, but if you forget, it would be better also that you know how to compute or how you know how to derive this fixed and moment formula. Okay, so since we have our P on the uh, mid span, that means we have PL over 8 as well on the right support. Now, what if our P is at A distance from the left and B distance from the right? So our fixed and moment on the left support is PAB squared over L squared, while on the right support is PA squared B over L squared. So, as what you can um, see here, we squared the farthest distance. Okay, look at the formula. We squared A because this is a farthest from the left or from the right su support. Okay, so that's how you memorize or how you have a uh, a way of familiarizing this equation or this formula. Now, if we have a triangular um, load, okay, the fixed moment would be um, WL squared over 20 on the side of higher load, while you have WL squared over 30 when you have zero load on that end, okay, just like this one, okay. Now, for a triangular load, this in this case, we have 5WL squared over 96 and 5WL squared over 96 on the right support. Okay, these are the fixed end moments. Now, for moment that is acting um, A distance from the left and B distance from the right, so you have this um, fixed end moment formula, so you need to familiarize that one. Now, if we have uniformly distributed that only runs from um, A, like this one. So this would be our uh, fixed in moment support. Okay. And uh, this is would be the fixed in moment support, uh, fixed in moment on the right support, um, support which do not have a load yet. Okay. Pag wala tayong load. Now, for, of course, if we have uniformly distributed load, it is the most common 
we use a fixed end moment we have we have wl squared over 12 on the left and wl squared on the right support okay so these are the fixed end moment supports for if we have loads but if you have settlement so these are the formula on the left and right and this we have also if we have rotation these are the formula for our fixed end moments okay now what if we have um two or more combinations of uh, load okay like for example if we have if we have this restrained beam and then we have a uniformly distributed load um, have a magnitude w and of course we have a a concentrated load p which acts b distance from the right and a distance from the left so you just need to add the fixed end moment support for the concentrated load and for the uniformly distributed load. So on the left support, we would have the fixed end moment would be WL squared over 12. Okay, this is 12. Now for the load or the concentrated load P, the fixed end moment would be, so you need to add that fixed end moment, which we have PAB squared over L squared. Now for the right, we have WL squared over 12 plus P A squared B over L squared. And what if you have a combination of of two concentrated load? Let's say we have this one. We have this um, P1. This is P2. And this one we have um, A. This one is B. This length is, let's say we have c and this one is d okay so to compute for the fixed end moment for the left support we would have of course you add the fixed end moment generated by each concentrated load we have um, p1 b squared a over l squared plus we have p2 c d squared over l squared this is for the left now for the right you'd have P1 A squared B over L squared plus P2 C squared D over L squared. Okay, so again, if you combine or if this is a combination of two or more loads, to compute for the fixed end moment, you need to add the fixed end moments for each load. Okay, so that's how you um, compute the fixed end moments for um, for the restrained beam with a different type of loadings. So again, you need to know this fixed end moment because you will be needing that value to the slope deflection equation. So you need to know the fixed end moment value here. Okay, so um, to better understand about slope deflection method, we will try to solve um, this problem. So we have this first example. Okay, this is an example of an indeterminate structure. As what you can see, we have uh, three supports with a total of five reactions. Now, again, we will try to use the slope deflection equation in computing for the reactions. And we will also try to draw the shear and moment diagram so again we have uh, this a uh, slope deflection equation we have the m and f is equal to the fixed end moment nf plus we have 2 ei over l times 2 theta n plus theta f minus 3 r okay now, in this case, since we do not have a support settlement, that means our cord would not have a cord rotation. So, therefore, our R here is automatically equal to 0. Okay? So, now, the first thing we do here is, of course, we divide these into segments. Okay? And then we know that our beam is discontinuous at B and at C. So, we begin at member AB so we have MAB so we have this a free body diagram in which we have this RAY and we also have RAX and the moment that's our moment AB 
and at point B we have here the R B L okay or this is the reaction just to the right of point B this is not the reaction of the support B because you need to compute for the reaction of or just to the right of support B and then add this value here and that would give you the total reaction at B so this is just a fraction of the reaction of a support B okay and we, of course we have here the moment BA as well but since we do not have horizontal uh, load on this structure therefore we can say that our RAX here is equal to zero okay and we have the length here which is six meters so we have our first equation here we have MAB is equal to the fixed end moment AB plus the 2 EI over 6 okay, times 2 theta A plus theta B minus 3R. But again, we do not have support settlement, so we can set this as 0. So therefore, our moment AB is equal to, we have, now take note we do not have loads um, within our beam or within the member A to B therefore we do not have fixed end moment because again fixed end moment or that is the moment if we restrained our beam if the, we have a restrained beam that let's say it's our A to B so this is our um, fixed end moment AB and this one is our fixed end moment BA but since again we do not have load within A to B, therefore our moment on the both supports is equal to zero. So we have uh, this um, fixed end moment here as zero. So therefore we have here, so we have four over six, we have EI theta A plus two over six EI theta B. But to make it uh, simpler, I would like to um, express this ai theta as a single variable. I would express that as theta prime a. So therefore, we have mab is equal to, um, we can simplify 4 over 6. That would give us 2 third theta prime a plus 1 third theta prime b. So this prime here indicates that this is a factor of ei and theta. Okay, just to make it uh, simpler and shorter. Okay, so this is now our first equation. Then next we have the moment ba, that means we have the fixed end moment ba plus 2 EI over 6, we have a 2 theta B plus theta A minus 3R. So again, we have 0 fixed in moment and 0 3R. That means we have MBA is equal to, you can uh, multiply 4 over 6 theta prime B plus 2 over 6 theta prime A. That means we have MBA is equal to 2 thirds theta prime B plus 1 third theta prime A. So this is our second equation. So these are the um, end member moments of um, the member A and B respectively. Okay, so we have now done with member AB. So let's proceed to member BC. So, and member BC, we have uh, at this joint, we have the, um, the reaction of B just to its right. Let's say it's R, R, B, R. And we have here the reaction at C just to the left, or that is R, C, L. And we have the length, of course, we have 9 meters. And we have the end moment. We have the M, B, C, and we have the moment C, B. So we, we begin at BC, so we have moment BC is equal to the fixed end moment BC plus 2EI over the length, we have the 9, times 
we have a 2 theta b plus theta c minus 3r. So in this case, again, we do not have support settlement, so we have r here equals to 0. And our fixed end moment here, since again, to compute for fixed end moment, you create a restrained beam. Okay, this is our restrained beam. We have um, 10 kilonewton per meter uniformly distributed load that runs through B to C. So we have here the fixed end moment BC and this is the fixed end moment CB. Okay, so this B and C. So since we have uh, this um, load system in which we have a uniformly distributed load, so our fixed end moment here we have um, positive WL squared over 12. This is positive since our moment here is assumed counterclockwise, but here we have negative WL squared over 12 since our moment here is rotates, um, rotates um, clockwise. So we have negative. Our sign convention always negative if we have a clockwise moment or clockwise rotation. So therefore, we have W. We have here 10, L is 9 squared over 12. We have 67.5 kilonewton meter. So this is our fixed end moment. So we have MBC is equal to, we have positive, again, because we assume that um, the moment there rotate counterclockwise. We have 67.5 plus, so you multiply, we have 4 over 9 EI theta B plus 2 over 9 EI theta C. To further simplify this equation, we have 67.5 plus 4 over 9. So again, we express that into one variable. We have theta prime B plus 2 over 9 theta prime C. So this is our equation number 3. Now for moment CB, we have the fixed in moment, of course, that is negative. We have negative 67.5 plus um, we have 2 EI over 9 times 2 theta C plus theta B minus 3R. Again, we can cancel out 3R. So we have MCB is equal to negative 67.5 plus 4 over 9 theta prime C plus 2 over 9 theta prime B. So this is our fourth equation. And lastly, we have member CD, which is overhang. So we have here RCR, okay? And we have here moment CD, and we have here moment DC. But since Point D in the beam is free end, therefore MDC here is equal to zero. Okay? So that means um, we don't need to create a slope deflection equation here because we can actually compute for MCD automatically. Okay? Since this is a overhang beam, so that means by just summing up moment at C is equal to zero, counterclockwise positive, we would get the value of MCD, our end member moment. So we have uh, this um, length for meters. That means we have MCD, that's positive, minus 30 times 4. Okay? And MDC, we may not include MDC anymore because this um, value or this MDC in the equation is equal to zero. Okay, so we have only 30 kilonewton and MCD as our force. And this equals to zero. So we have MCD is equal to 120 kilonewton meters. So we have now these four equations that we developed using the slope deflection equation. So again, these are the equation for end member moment. However, again, we cannot solve the moment or the beam or the MAB, MBA, MBC, MCB here because we are lacking of known values such as we have a known theta prime A. We also have a known theta prime B. 
and we also have a known theta prime c and of course we have a known m a b m b a m b c and m c b so in total we have seven unknowns but our available equation here are only four so we have only four equations so we will be needing additional three conditions now take note at uh, at support a this is a fixed support correct that means again if we have fixed support our angle there is equal to zero so we can add this to our equation this is our fifth condition in which our theta prime a is equal to zero okay and then we are still lacking of two equations here so upon looking at the structure itself we know that if we have moment at ba this is our moment ba and we have our moment here which is moment bc now take note to maintain equilibrium mba and mbc should have equal values in terms of magnitude okay so therefore our mba must be equal to mbc because they are in equilibrium so at point b we have equilibrium there so therefore by um, by looking at this relationship we would say that if you add mba and mbc it would um, sum up to zero again because they have equal values so we have second condition this is another joint condition okay so again these are joint conditions so this in addition to our equation we have m b a plus m b c must be equal to zero but still we are lacking of a seventh equation now in this case we have already computed the value of m c d correct and m c d here is equal to 120 kilonewton meters and this also gives the value of m c b okay so m c b is equal to m c d and we they have a same magnitude we have 120 kilonewton meters but the difference is that m cb must be negative in value because the rotation is in clockwise okay our rotation of mcb is in clockwise direction thus if you add mcb and mcd it would give you zero uh, moment at point c okay so mcb is equal to negative 120 so we have mcb is equal to negative 120 kilonewton meter so we use these conditions joint conditions so we have to simplify our slope deflection equation further we would have mab is equal to now we cancel this two third theta prime a here because theta prime is equal to zero that would give us one third theta prime b okay and for mba we have Again, we cancel this one third theta prime a, so therefore the remaining would be two thirds theta prime b. Now, for equation number six, we have mba plus mbc equals to zero, and that would give us mba is two third theta prime b, mbc is 67.5, this equation here, plus four over nine theta prime b plus 2 over 9 theta prime c and this equals to 0 so therefore if you uh, simplify it further you would have 10 over 9 theta prime b plus 2 over 9 theta prime c is equal to negative 67.5 so this is our equation number 8 the next we have the seventh condition mcb is equal to negative 120 kilonewton meter the equation for mcb here is um, 
MCB is equal to negative 67.5 plus 4 over 9 theta prime C plus 2 over 9 theta prime B. MCB is negative 120. This equals to negative 67.5 plus 4 over 9 theta prime C plus 2 over 9 theta prime B. So by further simplifying, we have a 2 over 9 theta prime B plus 4 over 9 theta prime C and this equals to negative 52.5 and this is our equation number 9. So we have this final equation, we have 10 over 9 theta prime B plus 2 over 9 theta prime C is equal to negative 67.5 and then we have a 2 over 9 theta prime B plus 4 over 9 theta prime C is equal to negative 52.5 so by um, doing simultaneous equation by applying algebra you can determine the value of theta prime B and theta prime C okay so you can also use your calculator if you are using Casio calculator or you can use um, by elimination methods, it's up to you on what, on which process you are going to apply. But, but to answer it directly, we would have the value theta prime b is negative forty one point twenty five, and theta prime c is negative ninety seven point five. Again, guys, this is not yet the value of the slope because this is equal to EI theta B and this one is EI theta C. To compute for theta B, that is the exact slope at point B and to compute for theta C, which is the exact slope at point C, you need to um, divide this value by the flexural rigidity EI. Okay? But since our concern here is to compute for the um, end member moments and the end member shear, we just and um, we will just be using this value, okay, instead of the exact rotation. But since looking at the value of of our angle, which is in negative, and the value of angle C, which is also in negative, that would give us an idea that the rotation at that point is in clockwise direction because we have negative um, angle of rotation. Now, so therefore, our slope here is in clockwise direction. So we have slope, which is theta B, that is in clockwise, and we have also slope at C, which is in clockwise direction as well. Now for the unit, now this has a unit of kilonewton meter squared and theta c as well, we have the unit of kilonewton meter squared. Okay, so since we have now uh, these two values, we can now compute the end member moments. We have for MAB, okay, so we have one third uh, theta prime b, our theta prime b here has a value of negative 41.25 and that would give us negative 13.75 kilo newton meters. Since we have a negative answer for MAB, so we have the rotation which is 13.75 kilo newton meter and the rotation is in clockwise direction okay then we have lastly m b a that is equal to two thirds theta prime b we have negative 41.25 again theta a is zero so this would only give us the equation that means we have two thirds of negative 41.25 this would give us negative 27.5 kilonewton meters or we have 27.5 kilonewton meters and since we have negative value therefore the rotation is clockwise direction so this is our answer for MAB and MBA now for MBC we have 67.5 plus 4 over 9 we have 
theta prime b of negative 41.25 plus 2 over 9 theta prime c is negative 97.5 this should be equal to mba because we have condition that mba and mbc are equal within terms of magnitude of the moment okay because they are at the same point which is at point b so we have 20 7.5 kilonewton meter and we have positive therefore our rotation here is counterclockwise for mcb we have negative 67.5 plus 4 over 9 theta prime c is negative 97.5 plus 2 over 9 theta prime b which is negative 41.25 and this gives us negative 120 kilonewton meter or this is um, 120 kilonewton meter and the rotation is of course that is negative so we have a clockwise rotation and of course we have mcd okay mcd as we know it this is 120 kilonewton meters and this is rotating positively so we have counterclockwise rotation so these are now the um, end member moments of our beam and then to compute for the shear and moment diagram or to draw the shear and moment diagram we need to compute for the reactions so we begin at a b so we have already known the value of the moments so we have uh, this moment a b so we have moment AB is rotating, is rotating uh, clockwise and the value is 13.75, okay? And we have moment BA which is the same as with AB that is still rotating clockwise, okay? So we have this 27.5. Again, this is our moment AB and a moment ba so we can compute for the reaction at a and the left side reaction at b so r c r b l so we have uh, this length here which is six meters okay so to compute for r a we can just sum up moment at b equals to zero counterclockwise positive then you have negative 13.75 minus 27.5 minus r a times six and this equals to zero so you have r a that is six r a equals to negative 41.25 so our r a here is equal to negative 6.875 since this is negative that means we have incorrect assumption so our ra is going downward okay so we have ra ra here which is downward that is we have 6.875 kilonewton so this is our ra and then we compute for the value of rbl we can just sum up um, force vertical is equal to zero upward force are positive so we can change the direction of r a here which is supposed to be um, going downward so we have negative r a plus r b l equals to zero so we can say that r b l is of course 6.875 kilonewton and that is going upward okay so again this is not yet the reaction at b so we need to compute for RBR on the uh, member BC. So this is the reaction of a right of B. So this is RBR. And this is RCL. Okay, that's the left of C. Then we have the moment BC. From what we have uh, previously computed, moment BC is 27.5 kilonewton meter. And that is rotating counterclockwise. So we have counterclockwise moment here that is equal to 27.5 kilonewton meter. And we have for moment BC, we have moment BC is 
and then we have moment CB in which the um, value is 120 kilonewton meter which is rotating in clockwise direction so we have a clockwise direction moment we have here 120 kilonewton meter and the length is 9 meters so we can now compute the value of RBR and RCL by just summing up moment at C equals to 0 counterclockwise positive so we have 120 plus 10 times 9 times 4.5 120 here is negative because this rotates in clockwise direction opposite from what we assume positive then we have RBR that is negative RBR times 9 and we have the uh, moment plus 27.5 that is positive and this equals to 0 RBR here is equal to 34.722 this is in kilonewton and this turns out positive therefore we have correct assumption that this is acting upward now for RCL we can sum up force vertical is equal to 0 upward force are positive then we have RBR plus RCL um, is equal to 10 times 9 so we have RBR is 34.722 plus RCL equals to 90 therefore the value of RCL here is equal to 55.278 and this uh, turns out to be positive therefore we have correct assumption that RCL is going up so by um, looking this value so we have RBL and RBC already computed so therefore RB is equal to 6.875 plus 34.722 kilonewton so our RB here is equal to 41.597 kilonewton so this is now the reaction at B so we have B RB here which is going upward and that is we have here um, 41.597 kilonewton and don't forget our moment here, which is moment AB, which is equal to 13.75, which is rotating clockwise. Okay, so this is our moment here. And our last reaction is RC. We have already computed the value of RCL, so our goal here is to compute for RCR. So we can cut at CD we have c and d here again we have a 30 kilonewton load here i'm just like what is shown in the figure and we have of course the moment cd which is rotating counterclockwise so you have moment moment cd okay and then we have reaction here which is r c r and then we have length four meters so we can compute RCR here by summing up moment at C equals to 0, counterclockwise moment are positive. So we have MCD minus 30. We can compute RCR here by just summing up force vertical, correct? And this equals to 0. And that we have RCR is equal to 30 kilonewton and that is acting upward. So we have this value of RCR and we have already computed RCL, so therefore RC here is equal to 30 plus 55.278. So you add them because they have the same um, direction and they are going upward. So and this equals to RC is equal to 85.278 kilonewton. So you have RC here which is equal to 85.278 kilonewton. So we have now all these reactions. We have the moment at A, the reaction at A vertical and again our horizontal reaction here at A is equal to zero. We have also the reaction at B and reaction at C. So we can now draw the shear and moment diagram. So this is now our shear diagram. So as what you can see we end at zero shear that means we have correct um, reactions now in our beam. 
So if you do not know how to draw the shear and moment diagram, so I have a previous discussion of it, you can just proceed to my playlist in Strength of Materials. So I have there, I have discussed there on how to generate a shear and moment diagram. Okay, so for moment diagram, we would have uh, this one. And for our moment diagram, we have uh, this diagram here in which we start at 13.75. This is positive because um, going back to our um, sign convention when we draw the shear and moment diagram, if we have a clockwise rotation for moment, that would give us a positive coordinate. Since this is clockwise, so we have positive coordinate in our diagram. And since our moment diagram ends at zero, okay, at the that means we have correct um, reactions and we have correct computations. So these are the procedures in um, computing or in analyzing indeterminate structure by using slope deflection method. I know that this is quite long, okay, but I guess it could be um, very useful no? if you learn, if you m practice more or if you solve a lot of problems so that it would give you um, ideas on different situations, different indeterminate situations. I know that this procedure is uh, quite uh, too long but um, this is how slope deflection method is being used. Okay, so my advice is to solve a lot of problems, a lot of situations, so that you'd be able to um, be an adept, no? especially in analyzing indeterminate structure. And that ends our example number one. So in the second part of this discussion, we will try to solve a new situation, a new case of indeterminate structure, and we will still be going to apply um, slope deflection method. Now I would leave the link of the part 2 of this discussion in the description below. Thank you guys for listening. I hope that you are in good condition right now and please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more updates. Thank you guys and God bless.